who dared to blow the whistle on their illegal rules of higher knowledge are being settled openly. Doing the promotion of goodwill to us with the ancient Romans. Thanks to return, and with them, they brought the girl to system. And now, those raw materials would have been produced. Prostitutes, pimps, and rockets for shine. And all many fanatics. Ozone, disco, pop, and... ABS-CBN News and Current Affairs delivers the inside story. And now, reporting from Manila, Loren Legarda. Tonight, on the occasion of his first state visit to the Philippines, we are privileged to come face to face with a man whose courage had inspired the dawning of a new South Africa, President Nelson Mandela. The time for the healing of wounds has come. The moment to bridge the chasms that divide us has come. The time to build is upon us. With these words, Nelson Mandela became the first black president of the Republic of South Africa. When Mandela assumed office in 1994, 44 million South Africans, 75% of whom were black, saw the dawning of a multiracial government after generations of apartheid. Nelson Mandela was born to a Tembu tribal chief in 1918. A lawyer by profession, he joined the African National Congress in 1944 to fight the brutal apartheid policies of the white minority government. In 1962, he was sentenced to life imprisonment for sabotage and treason, only to gain international attention as a symbol of resistance against social injustice. Released 28 years later, Mandela rallied for the voting rights of a black majority and shared the joy of his people when the last vestiges of apartheid were repealed in 1991. Two years later, Mandela shared the Nobel Peace Prize with then President F.W. de Klerk, whom he replaced in South Africa's first democratic elections. Humble son of the soil and father of a new nation, Nelson Mandela brings to the free world the heartbeat of South Africa. It's truly a great honor to be in the presence of one of the greatest moral and political leaders of our time. President Mandela, you were at the forefront of a struggle against apartheid. How was it like during those many years of struggle and incarceration? A struggle is never something very easy. It has broken many otherwise very powerful and courageous people. And our struggle was no exception. But uh, sometimes uh, we are not uh, just and fair. Uh, to many people who were involved in the struggle, who sacrificed much more than some of us. And secondly, I do not think that I would have survived if it was not for the immense sacrifices that were made by uh, people inside the country and uh, support uh, from the entire world. Few people can deny that uh, the struggle in South Africa has uh, brought a lot of suffering. Many lost their lives. Uh, many were imprisoned. Many were punished. Many lost uh, their beloved, their land, their dignity. And without them, it would not have been possible for us to win. And uh, we have won, and we have been able uh, to withstand uh, some of the most painful experiences because we were not alone. What provided you the guiding light during these very dark years? It must have been difficult. Having <coughs> well, been with us, both uh, inside and outside prison, it was a collective leadership. And uh, there are many men and women in our organization, past, and present, and I'm sure in the future, uh, who put together their ideas and are able to guide every single individual who takes part in the struggle. Mm -hmm. Alone, I would never have given 
and leadership. Mr. President, for the establishment of a free, multiracial democracy in South Africa came the problems, economic, social, political problems, protests, poverty, and increasing crime. And they say that political violence was eradicated, but um, other kinds of violence, criminal violence, soared. How are you dealing with this problem? Well, that's a very <coughs> important uh, question which is a cause of a genuine concern on the part of South Africans and visitors. But uh, we have an efficient Minister of Safety and Security. And uh, we have uh, an efficient Minister of Defense. Uh, we are going all out to stamp out crime. We have done very well during these last two and a half years, having inherited a problem which was out of control. We are getting on top of it, and we are confident that in due course will eliminate altogether. You're in the middle of your term, and um, you had mentioned time and again that you would not seek re-election in 1999. How would you guarantee that your successor would continue your economic, social, and political reforms? Men and women come and go, but the organization remains. It is the organization, not individuals. We have this guarantee in collective leadership that uh, every individual will not act on his own. He will be guided by the National Executive Committee of the organization and that the, the tradition of a collective leadership. We have uh, men far younger than myself who are talented, who are skilled, who are courageous, who are experienced. I have not the slightest doubt that uh, nothing will happen. If at all, the organization will even be in a better position to deliver services after I've stepped down. You don't consider yourself indispensable oh, no, no, to the no. party and to your government? No, no, no. If you had a peep uh, to our discussions as a leadership, you will see that uh, in the debates that take place, many of my colleagues are head and shoulders above me, and they have overruled me on countless occasions, and I've had to retreat because uh, I take a stand. Ms. Mr. President, your second uh, deputy president, F.W. de Klerk, had last year withdrawn from the coalition government. How does it speak of your leadership? And I understand that you had some differences in terms of the Constitution and on the issue of majority rule. Uh, what are the repercussions of this withdrawal and his opposition to your government? No, uh, Mr. de Klerk has served South Africa very well because uh, it would not have been possible for us to have this peaceful transformation if he had not uh, committed himself to that peaceful transformation. It made it easy for us. Whatever mistakes he has made in the past, but from the point of view of ensuring that we have a bloodless transformation, he served South Africa very well. I hope South Africa and the world will never forget the contribution that he has made towards a peaceful transformation in our country. How has it been like in the past uh, few days that you've been here, and what would you consider the highlight of your uh, visit here? Well, of course, uh, the reception I've been given by President uh, Ramos, Fidel Ramos, it has been tremendous. And uh, I was struck by his simplicity, and of course, uh, his achievements are a household a household, uh, both in the Philippines, Philippines and far beyond. I also was happy to meet uh, Corazon Aquino again. And she came to South Africa, and I hosted him in my official residence. In my official residence, that is a lady who was able to turn what was a family tragedy into a triumph not only for her family and the Philippines, but for the entire world. She was able, as a role model, to show that uh, it is not the disaster itself. 
it is the way in which uh, you respond to that disaster. That lady uh, is one I highly respect very much. Looking back now, Mr. President, what do you think were the lessons of the past? Well, uh, it is very difficult uh, to uh, talk about the lessons of the past. In so far as our country is concerned, we have been able not only <clears throat> uh, to crawl out of a painful past of tension, conflict, bloodshed, and uh, in which a human being was slaughtered merely to preserve a system which was morally wrong and rotten. And uh, we are now building a new nation. We call it a rainbow nation because uh, foes have now become friends. And uh, the rifle is being replaced literally with song. Mr. President, there have been unofficial reports that you would not uh, complete your term in office and would probably step down. <clears throat> no. no. I will step down as president of the ANC at the end of this year. The young people you see here, they are very keen that I should step down. They want to take over the leadership. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, as president of the country, of course you will continue. Your I will continue and step down at the end of my term in 1999. What do you plan to do in your retirement? Well, I might have to stay next to the road and beg uh, <laughs> for gifts and presents. Uh, we know that you've not kept secret your special relationship with your special companion. Would you just care to say a few words about it? Well, uh, I would like her to share my feelings with you. But of course, uh, my cultural background does not allow me to discuss such questions with people young enough to be my granddaughter. I'm sorry, I just had to ask a question because Filipinos are very romantic at heart. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate that. It's no wedding bells for you in the future? Pardon? No wedding plans or wedding bells in the well, future? Well, perhaps uh, it's better to ask her. And, uh, I'd like okay, to. She will make a decision. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It's been a great honor and a well, pleasure to meet you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.